Go ahead and take the code that I've provided for this video and copy paste it into your R session. Now I've written two functions. There's function B which takes a value and multiplies it by itself. And in function A we use function B to get the squared value of x. We save it as x squared and then we multiply x times x squared to get the cube. And then for all of the values 1 through 10, we take result and multiply it by the value to get result and then we return that. So what the heck does that even mean? Well, we can use the debugger to step through our code. So suppose you don't know anything about R. All you know is that you have this thing and this thing. Now, fun A, let's, let's load our code. Fun A returns, nine, you know, th this, this large number. But it's, it's if, if we didn't have this available to us, we wouldn't exactly know what happens, right? So I said debugger, we need to call debug. So if we type debug fun A, take a look at what's going to happen. We're going to look first at our global environment and we're going to see that we have two functions that are available. And actually let's do this. Um, let's call this C is equal to three and let's pass in C here. Okay. So the global environment is all of the things that exist that we've created within our package. Now we're going to run debug on fun A and you're going to notice a change here you're going to notice a change here and a change here. So let's let's run control enter on fun A after we've hit that debug value. And what you see here is now we're we're it's like inception. We're 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 getting deeper and deeper into our dreams. <laughs> um, so we're in the the second level of the browser, and you see that function A has has started up, right? So we have an x value which is equal to z. If you see over here, this is z and x is equal to z. And they're actually both available because x or z is part of our global environment. x is, is within this function here. So we have some, some tools available to us to dissect what's happening here. So next would allow us to step through our code one line at a time. If you notice that this highlight section, highlighted section is here, what it means is that's the code that's about to run. So what we can do is we could use the step inside button and actually go inside function B. You're going to notice again that the global environment over here is going to be different. Um, we're, okay, so it's good. we're in function A. We're going to hop into function B and then this browse is going to have a three next to it. So now let's step into it. So now that we've stepped into this function, we're now at level three, and you can see that um, y is equal to three because um, our x value here was equal to three because our z value was equal to three, right? This is the only place we've written it, but we're, we're, we're three, we're three levels deep in now, right? So what is what is y plus oh, y times y? Well, it's nine. We hit next. Now we're outside of function b. We've run it and we have created x squared, as you can see down here, and we're back inside function a. Now, if we hit next, we've come across what's called a for loop, and what's going to happen is for each value in one through ten, we're going to do this. So what does that mean or what does that look like? Well, we can find out. So it looks like we've just now created a variable called value within the for loop, which is equal to one. And whenever we multiply value time result, we get 27, which is what result will remain as. But now we've iterated, right? Now we're at value is equal to two and then result is 27. So 27 is gonna multiply by two and then by two, or by three, and then by 
4 by 5, right? So now we're inside of this for loop. Now there's another button, which is execute the remainder of the current function or loop. So what we can do is we can go ahead and get out of this for loop instead of clicking four more times by hitting this button. Now we are at the final line of our code. It's executed all the way to 10 and we are done with our function. So the next, um, the next thing that I wanted to do was show you the continue value. So we're still debugging. We hit this button, if we hit next, next, and then continue, it would finish out the function. The last thing that I wanted to show you is how to finish the, uh, close out the debugger. So you need to call undebug right after um, your function or before, it, it doesn't really matter, but what you need to do is you need to tell the debugger that you're done. So we hit undebug, and now we can run function A over and over. If we hit debug, and then we hit function A, then we would have to, um, it would make us jump into the debugger. So um, here's the introduction. I hope that this was useful, and I hope that this is a tool that you continue to use. In the next section, we'll look at, um, in, in more depth, how the debugger can be useful for you in learning our programming. Thanks.